Bruh. 30 days ago, I decided to stop spending in Rise of Kingdoms just to see how it is like to be a casual free to play. And let me tell you this, my experience was extremely bad. And I've come to the conclusion that you cannot be a casual and a free to play at the same time in Rise of Kingdoms. I mean, of course you can, but I doubt that you will enjoy the game. I will now share my experience with you and I'm going to give you some tips if you're a complete free to play and if you want to enjoy Rise of Kingdoms. Let's go. Spartans! What is your profession? <laughs> Let me start with a quick story so that I can explain the situation even better. When I was a kid, we didn't have a lot of money. So when we were walking past the stores with my mom and dad, I would always look at those beautiful toys, but I could never get it. But luckily, my father wasn't a complete free-to-play. He was like a quote-unquote low spender. So at least I always had a toy to play with. Bruh. But during these 30 days, I felt like I had no toy to play with. Like I was never a high spender, but when you're a low spender, you at least spend every single wheel to 10. If there is a hunt for history, go to floor 5 to get those juicy legendary blueprint fragments when there is egg event aka holy nice treasure you go as hard as you can so what i'm trying to explain is these are your toys even if you're a low spender in rise of kingdoms but if you're a casual and complete free to play no toys to play with because you're literally sitting there looking at the events and thinking about i wonder how many sculptures high spenders got from that wheel of fortune or how many blueprints they completed, or how many materials they got. It is absurd, but I think that's enough for story time. Let's now talk about actual in-game experience. Let's start with the most important thing in Rise of Kingdoms, and in my opinion, it is sculptures. The number of sculptures I managed to gather were significantly lower compared to times that I spent. A very recent example, a few days ago, we had more than gems. I only had 15k gems, so I couldn't spend 25k gems each day to get the max value and get a lot of sculptures. Instead, I had to spend 7k gems each day to get the maximum amount of value from the gems that I have. If I was spending like I usually do in those 30 days, obviously I would have a lot more gems. And even if, let's say, we couldn't spend 25k gems each day, I could at least do 25k gems on day 1 and 7k gems on day 2. So I would still get a lot more value during more than gems. And honestly, the reason why I still had good amount of sculptures in those 30 days was because I was already VIP 14 plus. If I didn't spend on this account at all, I doubt that I would be VIP 14 right now. So spenders obviously get a lot more sculptures compared to free to play, even though those spenders are casual because you guys know me, I cannot go hardcore. I'm 30 plus, I'm married, I have a 9 to 5 job. So there is no way for me to spend hours and hours in Rise of Kingdoms, farming gems, chaining barbarians, having 15 different farm accounts. So I was always a casual, but since I was spending a little bit, I didn't fall that much behind compared to hardcore players or high spenders. But not being able to get maximum amount of sculptures from the event wasn't even the worst part. It was actually equipment and materials. While I was spending, I would always get to floor 5 or floor 10, mostly floor 5, during Hunt for History. But this time, the only thing I could do was to get hammers, free-to-play ways, and just not play the event it hurt me so much that i couldn't get the floor five and get the legendary blueprints because i just didn't have enough gems look at the number of gems that i have 1k like how am i supposed to compete with others there is no way so what i'm gonna tell you is if you want to enjoy rise of kingdoms you have two options either you're going to spend on the game or you are going to be a hardcore free to play and what i mean by being a hardcore free to play is you're going to have a bunch of farm accounts now, farm accounts are super important, not just because they provide you resources, but it gives you the flexibility of not farming regular resources with your main account. You don't need to farm food, wood, gold, or stone with your main account because you are farming those excessively with your farm accounts. And what you can do with your main account is just focus on farming gems with four marches, chain barbarians all day, every day with ideally Richard and YSG so that you can get a lot of resources, a lot of gems by farming gem nodes and also chaining barbarians. This way, you will have a lot of gems even if you are free to play. Do you guys remember OC? We had a video caught up in the top and he had like 2 million gems and he's a complete free to play. The only reason is he has a bunch of farm accounts and thanks to those farm accounts with his main account, only thing he does is farming gems and chaining barbarians. This way, he is able to generate a lot of gems to play pretty much every single event as much as he wants but 
if you want to be a casual, what you need to do is, in my opinion, you need to spend a little bit to be able to enjoy the game. It is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I have a dedicated spending guide for low spenders and mid spenders, but basically, what I would always purchase is 30 day gem supply, Vanguisher bundle whenever I combine a new legendary blueprint, Writer of History whenever I summon a new legendary commander, Loose and Screws, amazing value, and specifically in Season of Conquest daily crystal supply and if you want to spend a little bit more which is going to help you a lot is crystal quest just like loose and screw they are so similar and it helps you especially getting those crystals early upgrading your technology early so that you are going to have better stats when you are fighting in early days in season of conquest so these were my main purchases but i didn't purchase anything other than daily gem supply at the start of the kvk which was around 40 days ago but to be honest it didn't actually help me much because i was very inactive during this kvk i traveled to europe with my wife for like 10 days so i didn't even feel the difference that crystal supply caused because I, I was just not playing the game but here's my final recommendation for my fellow free to play in my opinion that's just my opinion you don't have to follow and this might sound stupid but i think it's not instead of spending hours and hours in rise of kingdoms creating 67 different farm accounts farming gems all day and chaining barbarians use that time use those hours to build a side hustle make money from that side hustle and just spend it on rise of kingdoms because that way you can also be a casual in rise of kingdoms and let's be honest one day we all gonna stop playing rise of kingdoms and when you stop you will actually have a side hustle that generates you money so in my opinion instead of spending all those hours on your farm accounts farming gems chaining barbarians with richard and ysg all day use all that time to build a side hustle make money spending the game have similar results and just have a side hustle to generate you money once you stop playing rise of kingdoms i think that's the best solution that's my recommendation for you guys hope you liked it hope you enjoyed it being a complete free to play and being a casual at the same time was an extremely disappointing experiment for me in rise of kingdoms i don't know if i would play this game ever again as a complete free to play i cannot wait to spend on next kvk i think i will go double this time because i haven't spent for a month so it is only fair for me to spend a little bit more next time we spend so maybe on top of daily crystal supply and crystal quest maybe we purchase a few pop-up bundles on our next kvk i definitely want some toys to play with if i'm going to play rise of kingdoms if i wasn't creating content maybe i will completely stop spending and at some point maybe even stop playing but i love our community i love spotting gaming i love the channel I love the discord i love you guys so i think i will keep playing rise of kingdoms until you guys stop playing Hope you liked the video and here's a spending guide that I was talking about. If you're a low spender, where to spend your money, what purchases you should prioritize. I see you on that one. Bye.